Do you remember some of the fun things you did as a kid? What about this, the joys and thrills? Yes, the thrills as you went around on the carousel. Now then, would you believe that some people actually save a few of these gloriously colourful horses? Yes, they really do. So come with me and you'll see what selected carousel horses are doing today in retirement. John Clayton here, sitting on the porch, as is a wonderful custom, I guess, in the Deep South. And we're talking with Holly, the appropriately named star. And Holly, first of all, welcome. And you have a very unusual hobby. Oh, it's not so unusual from all the people I know, but yes, I collect carousel horses. But Holly, when you think about um, hobbies, carousels are not something you can sort of tuck under your arm. I mean, they're kind of on the big side. What got you interested? I mean, were you, is this 20 years ago, 30 years ago? This was, this was longer ago than that. I always wanted a horse from the time I was five, the Lone Ranger, Roy Rogers. A real horse? A real horse, but okay. I lived in an area where you couldn't have them, started saving my allowance. And when I was about 11 years old, my mom saw an ad for a carousel horse, and she thought, oh, look, it doesn't eat. She'd have a horse. It would be wonderful. And when we went to go look at it, it was as much as a real horse would be. In money? In money. Wow. <laughs> and so did you say to your mom, hey, mom, I really want that? Or did you say, no, mom, I don't think so? No, we, she didn't even tell me that we were thinking about buying it at the time. This came out much later, but she did take me to go and see them. It was at an antique fair. Um, so it kind of planted the seed, and then years later, a friend of mine, Cara Wessens, her mom had found one in a junkyard of all places, and I never forgot that. So it was, uh, it was exciting to, to know that you might actually be able to find one reasonably. Having said that, you have a very colorful, very big, wide selection. Uh, was this something that you collected over the years, or did you sort of go to some, you know, backyard sale where they had all these horses? How, how did that come about? I've actually been to sales where they have tons of horses. Uh, Sotheby's, Guernsey's used to sell um, whole carousels, but I was not in the price range where I could get anything more than a mirror from those. Um, but the first horse I bought, I was 19, and I had saved money for a car, and I bought a horse instead of the car. She bought a horse instead of a car? My goodness. Give us, you know, I'm sure people watching will say, well, now, how much does a carousel horse cost? Does that depend upon the size and the sort of historic value? It does. It, it depends a lot on who the carver was, what material it's made out of. They have a lot of what, I, what we consider designer pieces that you can get now. Um, most of the stuff I have that's generally outside are copies of actual horses or their designer pieces. Um, and they're, they're reasonably priced, anyone can get in, but they have no historic value. The, the real ones, because they stopped making them in the industrial age when the industrial cage around. What year is that? Um, around the 1920s. They used to carve them all. German Im immigrants came here, carved them. And then um, when you could make, it was just a seat on a ride, even though we consider it art. And when they could make the head out of metal, they made the head out of metal and they did the body out of wood or they did the head and the legs and the tail out of metal. And that's where the name head man came from, by the way. The main carver was the head man. Now these two horses in front of us, this big one here and that smaller one there, give our audience, uh, well, how much are they both? Well. The price-wise? Yeah. Well, these are both copies. So these are fiberglass copies, and they run, if you shop really hard, Craigslist is great, um, somewhere in the 800 to 2,000. 800? Whoa. <laughs> those, okay. are, those are for the copies. A copy is 800, so that means an original must be way out there. Some, some originals, if you had pointed to the other horses on the other side, those horses start anywhere from about 150 to $500. 
There are so many interesting aspects to this, but I must just ask you one thing. You said it all depends upon the carver, and that makes me think of, you know, when you buy a painting, is this an original Leonardo da Vinci or an English painter, John Constable? Obviously, if you buy the original, you're talking thousands of dollars, millions. So does that apply also to carousel horses? There have been horses that have gone easily in excess of $100,000, yes. Single animals. What about, before we close this out, what about um, the supply? I mean, you have such a wonderful collection here and in the back of your house. Um, is it possible to still find carousel horses? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There was about 1,000 carousels, they, they estimate, um, both traveling the country and then stationary at the end of the trolley lines and things. Um, when they were in their heyday. And then they started being dismantled in the, well, they'd succumb to fire and hurricanes and they'd get lost in other ways. And then when they began collecting them, you'd have 20 to 60 horses on a carousel, depending on it was a large one or just a little portable one. And so there's still, there's still horses to be found out there. All of the ones that are in the driveway, they have a sign on, they're from, uh, uh, D. Duncan collection and this is somebody's and this is one of the sad things now is the original collectors are passing on and they've spent their lifetime putting together a cohesive collection and then when their heirs get them they don't know what to do this man had more than a hundred carousel pieces um, all of the most of them are Mexican but he tried to get French and um, American and it's just sad to think that they'd be broken up and never see each other again. It's probably my British sense of humor, but um, if you're looking, if I was looking to buy a carousel horse, which I'm not, by the way, but if I was, um, would I go to want ads and look under carousel horses? You could actually go on the internet, and there are several. There are several really nice firms. Um, there's, there's number one. There's a magazine called the Carousel News and Trader, <laughs> and automated and automated music now. But um, uh, Brass Ring Entertainment has a wonderful selection of starter animals, and they go all the way up to the to the top end. And then you have Americana um, Antiques, you have Carousel uh, Corner, you have Carousel Classics. There's a lot of uh, dealers, but the best deals are to be found on eBay sometimes and um, Craigslist if you're willing to hunt and you know what you're looking for. So we're here in the bedroom and you can also use the pieces as architectural accents. So the piece above the closet was actually where the crank came out of for the horses. Um, and then the two mirrors were from the Knott's Berry Farm carousel at Independence Hall. It's a Denzel carousel and they're an original paint. It was gold leaf on there at one time, but it's faded. And then over the bed, that's a Philadelphia Toboggan Company rounding board. That's the pieces that are on the top kind of looking down at you. And uh, we took the top scrolly pieces and um, made her into a headboard. We're now sitting in the back of uh, Holly's uh, wonderful house here. And of course, the question arises, with a collection of carousels, how do you, how do you display them? Uh, with the patience and love of your family and tolerance. But I mean, do you need a big space to do that? Yeah, or, they, uh, or you can outgrow your house. You can. <laughs> so I guess you have them all displayed here in the back. And inside the house. We actually lived in a 1,400 square foot house and we had about seven or eight inside. And I told my husband, I said, when we get the new house, if I ever have too many, uh, I'll stop. It hasn't happened yet because I <laughs> learned to put them outside. Okay, the fact of the matter is, would you believe there are other homes in Rancho Palos Verdes that are also collectors of carousels. We're talking with the doctor and Mrs. Summit, and we're talking to them in their fabulous home that is literally at the top of Palos Verdes, and the name Summit, Dr. and Mrs. Summit, is really appropriate. And we're here because they are also collectors of a very unusual thing, carousel horses. So first of all, welcome to both of you. Um, doctor, tell me, how did you get involved in carousel horses? I mean, that, that's a very weird thing to collect. It wouldn't have been my 
start. But Joe here always loved horses as a very young child. Real horses. Real horses. Okay. But the next best thing was the Pike Carousel in, in Long Beach, her favorite place to go. It burned to ashes right. when she was, what, nine Ten, years old? Ten years old. Ten years old. old. That, yes, that has been the major tragedy within her entire life. And uh, so, in a way, we, we filled a piece of that void with our first horse on our second wedding anniversary. Sounds very funny to hear you say our uh, first horse and anyone watching makes you think, you know, they saw this live horse and then they <laughs> bought it, but actually it was a carousel horse. Did you, when you were, you know, started your collection, did you have any particular kind of horses in mind from the carousel or was anyone as good as what you wanted? Well, part of the story is nobody knew anything about what was a carousel horse or where it came from then. Uh, when we got that little horse, which was a German horse out of an antique store, Joe spent the summer researching what she could find out about carousels, interviewed and became friends with operators of carousels in the area, and discovered, for instance, that the best of them were American-made by immigrants from all over the place. Uh, the myth of carousels from the Black Forest was, in fact, a myth. So. Uh, at that time, though, we never had any thought of becoming collectors. We were, we were dirt poor at that point. I was still a medical student, and uh, uh, we just wanted that one little horse. You just raised a very interesting thing. You said American-made. You know, there are certain things in life, and you know the country, and you know the person is indication of that country's you know talents so when you said american made does america stand at the forefront of making carousel horses i mean i know they're not made anymore but is this country in the foremost lines of that sort of thing by our judgment yes that's a very chauvinistic view uh, because of course there was this active industry especially in germany however as the immigrants came to this country, they, they had, practiced it here. They had a new freedom to make their own designs. The, the European horses are very stereotypic. One company can hardly be distinguished from the other. Here in this country, four or five different manufacturing companies developed very different styles, and the carvers associated with those companies became uh, known or known eventually by the rest of us uh, for their unique creative talent. Tell me about some of the horses, and it still sounds funny to say, tell me about some of the horses you have in your home, but <laughs> that notwithstanding, tell me about some of the horses you have in your home and the ones that you like most. Ooh, that's like which of our children is our <laughs> favorite, right? <laughs> well, in fact, uh, it's not only horses. There was a time when menagerie animals were popular. So in addition to horses, we have lions, tigers, bears. Am I in a zoo? <laughs> yeah, you are. You <laughs> but none of them really moves oh, or good. bites. Uh, but uh, within that kind of random collection as they became available, we were so fortunate to become acquainted with the survivors the surviving family of one of the most creative carvers in the field. And so that group of horses tends to be our favorite uh, because we have that kind of personal connection to them and because they're gorgeous carvings. I know that you are friends with another good friend of ours, Holly Starr, and Holly amazed me by telling me how much these menagerie of animals cost. Did you have any idea when you started what they cost? Well, when we started, they cost more than we can afford. But, but you bought could, them anyway. Well, but that could be two or three hundred dollars uh, in time. Uh, they became worth two or three thousand dollars, or ten or fifteen. Wait a minute, fifteen thousand? Not not uncommon at all. Where do you go to buy a carousel horse? I mean, <laughs> the whole concept just seems so funny to me. Well, there's there's a market. Uh, several dealers buy and sell carousel horses within this community of fans and collectors we developed a kind of a righteous ethic early on that we would not buy figures, carvings, 
that had been looted off of operating carousels. There was a time operating carousels were being bought by dealers for the purpose of breaking up. So where we went to get carousel horses was uh, incidental contact with someone who had one in his basement. With early publicity of this sort in airline magazines and such, uh, people came to us uh, oh. from around the country offering us something out of their own basement. So By which time you knew how much things cost and whether it was a good bargain or a bad bargain. Uh, that's, that's hard for us, us to address because even though we were dealers for a while, we were never invested emotionally in the price of these things. Okay. Our, the meaning for Joe uh, has been the emotional meaning of something close to her childhood and the, the fruits of the creative labors of carvers whom we came to know by name and history. The other thing that I find fascinating, when I was interviewing uh, Holly uh, Starr, and I asked her, you know, how many you have? And she said, oh, I have a lot of them. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, um, a lot of carousel horses, it's not something you can sort of, you know, tuck under a chair or something. Yeah. I mean, they're big, big things. Where do you have most of yours? Well... Uh, how many have you got, by the way? Yeah, you'll have to ask Joe. I, I have no head for numbers anymore. <laughs> but you have a lot. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. And they're all over, as you will see. <laughs> we dealt in them for a while, so we'd buy them on inventory. Uh, eventually, we ran out of rooms in which to put one or two, and then I began digging trenches. The horses are overtaking my home. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we began di digging trenches into the foundations of the house. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Here's a gentleman who collects horses, carousel horses, but in addition to collect them, he digs trenches around his home to put his, whoa, my goodness, you must really love them. Admittedly crazy. I think maybe in a past life I was a miner because we, we just dug and dug and dug and uh, poured concrete and developed uh, bays where we could store those that we expected to sell. Before we bring our, uh, to me, fascinating conversation about a really unique kind of thing in the world today, you mentioned lions. Um, do you have one lion, two lions? I mean, how many lions? <laughs> Again, it sounds funny to say, how many lions do you have? But how many, you know, carousel lions do you have? Two here right now. There have been five. Do you like lions? Oh yeah, I was born a Leo. Uh, for me, it's not the species as much as the, the quality of the carving. Lions are fine, uh, tigers are fine, ostriches will do, uh, <laughs> giraffes are great, and uh, especially these horses can be uh, categorized into real works of art. Before we close our conversation here, is there any number or website that you would like to give our audience so they can contact you, or would you rather keep this just an excursion into your home and showing uh, our audience what you have? We're no longer in the business, and at the same time, we wouldn't want to deny somebody the opportunity to share this uh, or to learn more about it. So. Uh, I think the best thing would be a postcard or a letter to our post office box, which is Flying Horses, Post Office Box 2373, Palos Verdes, California, 90274. I must say, uh, this has been one of the most interesting uh, conversations I've had with anybody in a long career in doing this kind of thing. It's been a real pleasure, Dr. Summit and Mrs. Summit, for this interview, and thank you very kindly. Now let's go and explore your house and see some of these wonderful things we've been talking about. Very good. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. Look, Ma, no hands. What year, what year was this, Doctor? 1914.
I thought, what else? I'll do it in an armchair. Sitting in the House of the Summits in their incredible collection of carousels and, as a good doctor said, a menagerie of animals, this is John Clayton closing out what I hope you found to be an interesting and unique look at some of these amazing animals. Oh, pardon me, not animals, but actually carousels. Until next time, John Clayton, thanks for watching.